Chat, let's react to let's react quickly to Freak's new Swain, okay? So there's new Swain that's coming out, not next patch, but the patch after that. And there's also new uh, bounties, which I've been complaining about how long that like bounty system is completely broken. First of all, like bounty system and objective bounties, both of them are absolutely dog shit. There are so many instances where I play solo queue where these are abused so hard where the losing team gets rewarded or, or not even the losing team gets rewarded for no reason whatsoever. Like they're really bad systems. I'm glad they're doing something about it. Anyway, Swain, he talks about, I mean, I'm just going to read the TLDRs here and there's no way I'm watching 42 minutes of this video. I mean, I kind of watched it a little bit uh, off stream, but not much. Basically, the TLDR is that Swain wins a lot more in Midland and Botland, which is true. His win rates tend to be pretty actually high on those roles, especially in low MMR. But Swain loses a lot in supports, uh, so they can't buff him. So he has bad win ratio in support, and he has like a player base in support, but they can't buff him because mid and top win rate is too, bo uh, too big. So their goal is to try to fix that problem, and they're going to try to make mid lane Swain and bottom Swain be more satisfying to play. But they're not going to try to raise win rate, so they're probably just going to like change numbers in the kit. And then they're also going to try to make support be better, but maybe bo maybe like all this can be achieved, so they're going to try to like get at least one right, is what they're trying to say here, right? Basically, what they're going to do is they're going to rearrange base stats on Swain. Um, he talked about one of the base stats being mana region. They're going to give him less mana per rank, but they're going to put mana region higher. Uh, the reason why you do that is because every support item that you buy gives you percent mana region, so it's going to be like support Swain buff. They're trying to make Swain be better in PvP, but worse in PvE, so it's going to be worse at wave clearing. So I assume his Q or something is just going to be a worse wave clear tool, which I think is fine. Um, they're going to close out W in E max, which means that right now it is basically way better to max W second on Swain than E. So they're going to ma basically make it so you probably get less things when you're maxing W and more things when you're maxing E. So the win rate wise, you're going to be able to make a decision between maxing W and E, which is probably a good thing. Then like reability plus plus plus. I'm not really sure what this he means by this. This is probably just making the champ more re reliable, I guess. Base kit up and ult down. This means that Riot is gonna put emphasis on making his base abilities better, so Q, W, and E, and making his ultimate weaker. So he's not gonna be as ultra reliant anymore, and he's gonna be able to do more with his base kit. And then it says better battle mate shipping, shaping. Okay. So it seems like they're still committed on the same theme of uh, Swain, which is like Shang into like short range, right? And still weak into long range. So it seems like his weaknesses and shanks are going to be kind of similar to right, what they are right now. So then we go forward. Uh, did he say anything else? So here he goes a bit more into detail. So here's where it gets interesting. So Swain E, I, I, as far as I understand, Swain has two parts of E, right? One when you pull out the hand and the other one when it pulls out and it explodes when it hits something. So I believe the first instance of E when it goes out will not do damage anymore, if, um, if I understand this. Only the second part of E is going to go dam do damage, the explosion part. But uh, both the E's are going to be much faster, so this part is going to be way more reliable, which means that, because right now we had a patch where move speed in the game went down a lot, and now that Swain is going to be also a lot faster, I think it's going to be really hard to dodge his ability from now on. Like, I don't know how much faster we're talking about here, right? Maybe some champions like Silas E can still dodge the ability by juking left, right, or whatever. So I think this is kind of needed, as also Swain is, I would say, a little bit outdated disability compared to, like, modern League of Legends champions, how fast they can move, right? They did the same with Velico C, right? Velico C, they had to, like, speed up the ability, so when someone is on top of you, you can just E point and click them now. It's kind of similar here with Swain, I guess. They kind of need to make this ability faster. That means the ability is going to be a lot stronger because you're going to uh, land it a lot more. It also means that like passive is getting buffed here, right? Because you're going to land more ease, so you're proccing passive a lot more. Uh, I'm actually just kind of surprised they're not giving him a new passive. I mean, passive is kind of like weird on Swain. It's kind of like a grasp in a way with abilities. So then we have uh, Swain R. So Swain R will apparently have multiple Demon Flares. Demon Flares is where you press the button and then it like explodes and does the shockwave damage and slows. R will now fully scale with haste. I believe this means that um, 
this means that Swain R, as soon as you press it, we start we start the cooldown. This means that even if you manage to extend R, like for a very long amount of time, the cooldown is still ticking in uh, like in meantime. So this is like I think are just a genuinely good decision. Scaling shift, lower AP ratios, new HP ratio, lower rank scaling. Okay, so here's what's happening here. So Swain R will do less damage because it's gonna have a lower AP ratio. So it's probably gonna be more emphasized on healing rather than doing damage to people, right? It's gonna add a HP ratio, so the champion is further incentivized to build HP items, which makes complete sense on Swain. He's a Lianji, Lianji, uh, Lianji, um, Riley type of champion, right? So this makes uh, absolute sense. There's also other items like a Bisa Mass that are viable, and lower rank scaling. So this also means that I guess. This, in a way, is kind of like a buff to support, because you get less levels, I guess. Uh, that's kind of it. I mean, lower rank scaling just means, I guess, like, a little bit worse ability. And then, power from Drain into Demon Flare. So it seems like the normal Drain of the ability is going to be weaker, but the Demon Flare is going to be a lot stronger, because you're going to get multiple of them. So, because you're going to get multiple Demon Flares, that also means that your real reliability on W and E in teamfights and Q, maybe, to an extent, too, is going to go up. Because I think the way Swain is going to now combo is he's going to want to explode with Demon Flare, then he's going to be able to land E's and W's in teamfights a lot easier. Right? And then we have Swain stat, passive QW changes. So mana into region, I think that's the one I mentioned based that passive heal nerf. So I guess the passive Swain is going to be healing you less, I suppose. But I think the max health, I, I, I assume, is still going to be the same. Q cost reduction, so Q is going to be less mana spam. Uh, less mana, so it's going to be more spammable in lane. Probably bigger buffs of support, maybe, I don't know. Q more minimum, but less maximum damage. Okay, so you're no longer going to care as much about landing multi-bolt swing Qs. But especially in lane, this is like a big buff in lane, maybe not so much in teamfights. But in lane, you're going to be able to do this like long range tap cues where you only land like two, three bolts into enemy and it's going to do more damage. So poking Swain is going to be better. I, su I suppose this is maybe even a support buff too. Um, w compressed. I have no clue what this means. I didn't watch the video to this point, so I don't know what this means. Uh, so I won't really comment on it. And AP ratios are generally higher in base kit and lower in R, which is, I think, like, fair. So it's going to be, like, like Swain's identity is going to be less revolved around R. Bounties over you, champion bounties and objective bounties, uh, systemic goals, less snowballing and more stringent comebacks, player bounties, bounties can be complex under the hood, but they should make in each intuitive sense to players. So there's, like, a lot of reasonings here, which I won't really talk about. It's kind of... It's kind of hard to talk about bounties uh, until um, until they actually come out, like with specific numbers. Like here's like a huge text precast, which is like all bounties were about kill shakes or death shakes. One kill or death is fully reset the bounty. Uh, one assist equals minus one death. That's how it worked in the past. Now it's gonna be like kills, deaths, assist, and farm. So farm is gonna be counted. It's gonna contribute. Um, based on gold, one kill sometimes means one death. Assists count from for deaths too. Farm is scaled and different from positive. Tuning is meaningfully different. So, again, I don't really know. I am not gonna comment on bounties really. I'm glad they're getting changed, but I need to see the actual numbers and exactly what it does before I can really like say anything. Mostly under the hood, tuning gold matters more. XP matters less. Turrets matter more, grubs no matter, overall turns off sooner. Overall somewhat less gold. Barn Elder and Linger. Again, I don't really know what this means. I would need to watch the video, but sadly I, I only watched like one third of the video in the morning. So I didn't really finish it, so I don't know exactly what he means by this. Swain so Rework looks cool, bounties are obviously good too. We'll see how it shapes up. Swain is probably still gonna be a low MMR skewed champion though. Regardless of the rework, I would assume.